And so, Mr. Philbin, what did Mr. Clark say in response to you telling him on this January 3rd phone call that you thought there'd be riots in every major city if President Trump stayed in office um, after January 20? He said, well, Pat, that's what the Insurrection Act is for. And what did you understand Mr. Clark to mean by this? Uh, he was referring to what's I guess it's colloquially known as the Insurrection Act. I don't know if that's the formal title, but there is a provision that permits the president to call out federal troops and or federalize the National Guard to uh, restore order if there's a, an area in a state where the normal civil authorities are not able to maintain order. And that's what uh, President Bush, H.W. Bush did in 1992 in the L.A. riots. I and mean, that that is exactly what the Insurrection Act exists for, is to restore order if there are riots. And how did you react to Mr. Clark saying that's what the Insurrection Act is for? I, I don't think I said anything on, on the phone, but I, I thought that um, I, I just thought that that uh, showed a lack of judgment in that, you know, if, if we're talking about that, we're talking about plans that we're really kind of we're off we're off the chart where we ought to be talking about things if that's part of the plan. This is Michael Popak with Illegal AF Hot Take. We no longer have to wonder what Pat Philbin, Donald Trump's former deputy White House counsel, testified to to the Jan 6 committee and to Jack Smith's grand jury because it's out of the bag. He testified against Jeff Clark an indicted co-conspirator with Donald Trump in Georgia, who may or may not have been Donald Trump's last acting attorney general, who the D.C. bar is is uh, going to successfully strip him of his bar license to join a long list of lawyers who had worked for Donald Trump that are either criminals, convicted criminals, and or have lost their bar license. Um, and in the testimony in that hearing, leading to uh, Jeff Clark's getting his law license revoked and suspended, Patrick Philbin, along with several other people who were the insiders inside the West Wing, who knew what was going on during the chaotic last gasp days of Donald Trump's administration as he tried to cling to power and tried to weaponize the Department of Justice to go against um, the will of the people, point them in the direction of state houses and try to convince different states not to certify the election using Jeff Clark. Pat Philbin had a unique vantage point that we're only learning about now. There's a reference to what we always believe was Pat Philbin in the um, indictment that Jack Smith brought about a conversation that he, not identified, had with another person, not identified, unindicted co-conspirator Jeff Clark, in which, in, in which Jeff Clark we now know, said out loud that if there were riots that resulted in the streets by people who objected to Donald Trump's cling to power, that's what the Insurrection Act was for, citing a, uh, a, a law on the books that has rarely been invoked <clears throat> where the president of the United States can use the, the military against its own people and to try to quell that kind of unrest. We thought it was Jeff Clark, but now we know. But Patrick Philbin just testified against Jeff Clark in the D.C. bar hearing. And he said he had a unique vantage point to try to um, talk Jeff Clark off the ledge and out of the conspiracy, because apparently he and Jeff Clark had been in private practice together at the same law firm in the 90s. So he picked up the phone when he had heard that Donald Trump was back with his harebrained idea to try to replace the leadership of the Department of Justice, then acting Attorney General Jeff Rosen, acting Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue, with Jeff Clark, who at best was the head of the environmental division of the Department of Justice, but had fallen in love with all of Donald Trump's crazy, uh, now debunked and refuted fraud theories, including one, and this is I'm not making this up, this is from Pat Philbin, including one in which Jeff Clark believed that smart thermostats were being used to communicate with election devices, voting machines, and change votes from Trump to Biden. Ever try to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, we've been there too. But here's a breath of fresh air. Fume. It's not about giving up. 
It's about switching up. Fume takes your bad habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I tried fume, it was way more flavorful than I thought, and it feels very fresh. The look and feel of a fume is very sleek. It's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Plus, fumes just released a magnetic stand for your fume, so there's no more losing it around the house. And it's built with fidgeting in mind. You can spin your fume around on it. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash legal AF and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code legal AF to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Start the good habit at tryfume.com slash legal AF to save 10% off the journey pack today. So Philbin testified, first time we've heard from him, and we have the report from those that were in the room. He testified that he picked up the phone when he heard that Donald Trump was thinking about putting uh, Jeffrey Clark as the head of the Department of Justice and try to talk him out of it. He said, Jeff, what are you doing? He said, well, there's all these these voter fraud and we had to save democracy. He said, I, I'm the deputy White House counsel. I've seen all of the alleged voter fraud allegations and none of them are true and none of them are outcome determinative. He said, and if you do this, if you participate in this, if you go down this path, which he called uh, assured failure, he said to Jeff Clark, this is assured failure, the path that you're taking, and it's going to cause mass rioting. And that's when Jeff Clark said the chilling comment, if there's mass rioting, that's what the Insurrection Act is for, that Donald Trump would suppress people who were objecting to him clinging to power and trying to over, overturn the will of the people by crushing them with their own military. You're not supposed to use the military, the U.S. military on domestic soil against its own citizens. We have constitutional and statutory prohibitions against that. <clears throat> However, the Insurrection Act provides an exception. If there's rioting, then there can be almost like the suspension of the Constitution and the military can then be used. It's an aspect of martial law. Jeff Clark flippantly responded that way to Philbin. And Philbin said, if you're going to go down this road, you better be dead to rights. You better be right. And you're not. And Jeff Clark didn't want to hear anything of it. And the focus of the disbarment proceeding is, is similar to the focus in the indictments against Jeff Clark that he uh, participated in the weaponization of the Department of Justice by Donald Trump. He was going to lead the Department of Justice for the last several days, argue to the states and the swing states, the battleground states, that um, there was fraud, outcome determinative fraud in the election, have them refuse to certify the electoral votes, turn it over in a chaotic result to the state houses to vote for the president's. Take it away from the people, take it away from the popular vote, take it away from the Electoral College and turn it over to each state house dominated by Republicans to pick the president like we were back in the old tiny days of the 1800s. And Philbin, we know, cooperated, of course, and testified before the grand jury for the special counsel. This story, this anecdote I just told about his interaction with his then uh, friend or former colleague, Jeff Clark, made its way into the indictment. Right. It just got mentioned uh, anonymously that uh, uh, unindicted co-conspirator number blank, which was Jeff Clark, had a conversation with this other person who was a White House lawyer and the Insurrection Act was brought up. But now we know from P Pat Philbin's testimony to the D.C. bar, along with Richard Donahue, who was the deputy or acting deputy attorney general, all against Jeff Clark. Now you know why Jeff Clark has been disbarred. But more importantly, we now know what Patrick Philbin will testify to at trial. It's not just about grand jury leading to an indictment. It's about who does the prosecutor have in terms of witnesses to array against the defendant. 
as it tries to meet, the prosecutor tries to meet its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So we know now, we suspected from the way that Patrick Philbin's uh, comments were mentioned in the Jan 6 report and, and the fact that we pieced it together from the indictment. But now we know point blank what Patrick Philbin's ultimate testimony is going to be about his interaction. He also told Jeff Clark that there would be mass resignations in the White House counsel's office and at the Department of Justice if he took over the Department of Justice. Mass resignations. They would, so they'd already threatened it. Now that had backed, according to Philbin, that had backed off Donald Trump by the end of December because he had a plan early January, beginning of the end of December to put Jeff Clark, lop off the leadership that had replaced his uh, his second attorney general, Jeff Barr, uh, Barr, right, and replace him with Jeffrey Rosen, who was the, dep uh, the acting deputy or the acting attorney general and the acting deputy attorney general, Richard Donahue. But with just days to go in the administration, but needing a, a reliable co-conspirator, Donald Trump was threatening to put in Jeff Clark in that position, elevate him from like seven rungs down the ladder where he headed up the environmental civil division and bring him as the head of the of the um, the entire Department of Justice. But but uh, Trump re relented when uh, he was told that the leadership of the Department of Justice would all walk out the door and resign en masse if he did that. Except that got resuscitated, that plan again, uh, in and around Jan 6th. And so that's when Philbin had the phone call apparently with Jeff Clark to try to talk him out of it and off the ledge, but was unsuccessful. And Jeff Clark went his own way and got indicted. In this conversation that he had, uh, he also remarked that, um, you know, that Donald Trump had not, I mean, he acted as if Donald Trump had not offered the job to Jeff Clark. Now, in the Jan 6 report, they believe, based on their interviews of hundreds of people and documents that they've seen, that Donald Trump actually did offer the job to Jeff Clark and in some sort of secret ceremony or meeting, right? Jeff Clark accepted and for a short amount of time, 72 hours or something, was the acting attorney general. But there's no real proper record of that. And I'm not sure even in the history books, it'll go down that he, even for that blip, was the acting attorney general. But Philbin, you know, just to show you the, the chaos in the White House at that moment, uh, believed that he hadn't been offered the job and that they had successfully refuted that. And, and he was asked point blank in the D.C. bar process if Jeff Clark had been made the acting attorney general, what would you have done? He said, I would have resigned on the spot. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, a little bit of a mismatch. But either way, whether he was um, offered the job, accepted it, or didn't, didn't accept it, this whole concept that Jeff Clark was part of Donald Trump's plan to weaponize the Department of Justice, and when he couldn't find leaders with who had ethics and integrity to follow Donald Trump over the abyss and try to overthrow democracy, he was willing to replace him with Jeff Clark. And that's why Jeff Clark is in the crosshairs. That's why he's been indicted. That's why he's an unindicted co-conspirator, luckily, in uh, for him in the D.C. case, which has been stayed pending the outcome of the Supreme Court decision on immunity. But that's where we are. So this new reporting is about Pat Philbin, who's going to be a key witness against Donald Trump. And now we have a better taste of what his testimony is going to be like. We do these kind of hot takes right here on the Midas Touch Network on Legal AF, the podcast at the intersection of law and politics. I do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I have a colleague each time, Karen Friedman Ignifolo on Wednesdays, Ben Micellis on Saturdays, and then on um, audio podcast platforms, wherever you get your podcast from. And if you like these kind of hot takes of mine, you can follow me at MS Popak. And you can give me a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment. Helps with the content and helps keep this uh, to you where uh, where you can find it right here on Legal AF. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.